This is my story. This is my song. Can I get an amen? amen. Thank you, Harry. Good morning. morning. It is a good morning, isn't it? I have to tell you, (coughs) excuse me, this this past week, uh, Debbie went to Atlanta, Georgia to spend some time with a friend of hers who had had some surgery, taking care of her three young children and all of that. And then on Thursday and Friday, I drove down and back, bringing her with me. I mean, I brought her back. I mean, I didn't leave her there. But driving from here to Evansville on 130 and then taking 41 down to 24 and then 24 to Chattanooga and through the mountains, the heavens proclaim the glory of God. It was just absolutely beautiful. I wish I could have had a video camera so that you could have all seen it, but you know, it never shows up on video the same way that it shows up in real life. But reds and yellows and even some greens and then there were these all these pink flowers, just like Joyce's blouse over there, that that were just covering everything. It was a a beautiful, beautiful spiritual experience, except for that one pickup truck that tried to hit me around Nashville. (laughs) Well, I guess that was kind of spiritual too now. (coughs) Calling on the name of God. Oh, God! We have some announcements to talk about today. Uh, First of all, uh, let's let's help her get it over with soon so that she doesn't have a panic attack. I don't even see where she went. Where's Penny? Oh, she's up there. How many of you enjoy speaking in public? How many of you would rather eat bugs than speak in... Yeah, so, that's Penny. Thank you. Um, I'm Penny Woolwine. I do the children's music here at the church, the praise man, and co-direct with Robin Carr for the chancel choir. So if you have anything to do with music, you can just come see me. <laughs> Um, We are doing children's musical again this year for Christmas Eve, and we are in dire need of children to participate. Um, It's open K through 12. There's a part for everyone. There's even parts for an adult, maybe, that would like to participate also. Um, We rehearse on Sundays from 2 to 3.30. We always have a snack of some sort. I think last week we had popcorn, and they went away with a fun size Snickers. Um, It's lots of fun. And the dress rehearsal, it will be Christmas Eve Eve, and um, we usually do like 10 to noon, and we have a big pizza party afterwards. Uh, We've had up to 15 or 20 children before, and if you talk to any of them, they'll tell you that it's a lot of fun. Um, So please, please encourage your children, your grandchildren, nieces, nephews, cousins. They don't have to go to this church. Everyone is welcome. We practice Sundays 2 to 3.30. Um, I know it sounds like a long time, but it's really not because we always feel like we could use more practice. Uh, So if you have any questions, please just talk to me. And yeah, I hope to see you soon. Thanks. Thank you, Penny. Then, tonight, from 7 until 9, we have a special educational opportunity for anybody, everybody. We are calling it, What Do We Say? It is going to be looking at the issue of homosexuality from a biblical perspective, a Methodist perspective, (coughs) excuse me, and a Christian perspective. Hopefully they're all pretty much the same thing, but that would be tonight. Cam says for some reason, and he's not sure why, he listed it as being in here. It's not going to be in here. Now, the building isn't that big. If you get here and you wander into this room, you'll figure out that you're the only one here at 7 o'clock. But it's actually going to be, and I can't ever remember the number of the rooms. I really don't do well with the numbers of our rooms. But it's going to be in the classroom of the friendship class. It's going to be, that's that one right over there. So that's where it's going to be. It's going to be from 7 until 9. And the Reverend Paige Roberts is going to be helping walk us through that whole thing. That's Paige, you will remember, is the preacher from last week. (coughs) Then... Next week, next week is going to be our Harvest Festival, and I need some help from you on this one. We are having worship next week one time. It's at 945. Say that with me, 945. Now, if you show up at 830, it's going to be okay, because we're going to have some sort of refreshment and fellowship time, 
Then, before worship, you people normally have it after worship, but the other service has it before worship. So it's going to be then. So if you show up, you'll be able to have snacks and coffee and all that sort of stuff and be just completely wired by the time you get here. But, 9.45, we're going to be having, oh, the choir singing. I think the kids are singing. I think the praise band's playing. We're actually going to have some people who are going to get together, and any of you are going to be welcome too. Have you ever seen the gay family gatherings or anything like that when they all kind of get together and do stuff? We're going to try to get as many people as we can together, probably without necessity of rehearsal, to get together and play Will the Circle Be Unbroken? No, that's the next Sunday. Next Sunday we're going to be doing a whole lot of other things. So anyhow, it's going to be really, really good. Afterwards, we're going to have a potluck. Afterwards, it's going to be about 11 o'clock. We're going to have a potluck. And the potluck is going to, we're going to provide the meat. The church is going to provide the meat. And you get to bring whatever else you want to bring. So you don't have to have something cooking at home and run home and get it and bring it here. You can bring, you know, your cold jello. I love jello. Or your salad or your baked beans or whatever it is that you've got. And we're going to be having some games and things like that for kids to go on. That's next Sunday. What time is church next Sunday? All right, now, two things, two things. First of all, who could you bring? Look around, see who's not here. Really, see who's not here? There's a metaphysical statement if I've ever heard one. See who's not here, and who could you bring to our Harvest Festival? Who could you actually call up and say, hey, listen, it's going to be a big day Either somebody who's part of our church or maybe somebody who isn't part of our church. Wouldn't it be cool if we had wall-to-wall people in here next Sunday? Wouldn't it? So, who could you bring? Secondly, been trying to figure out what kind of garb to wear. The theme that I've put together is good vibrations or as I think it was Carolyn Woolliver suggested, maybe God vibrations. Remember, remember the old Beach Boys song? I'm picking up good vibrations. So, <laughs> Randy does. I got it. I got it. it was, see, that was kind of my thought. Can we come as hippies? I was thinking, can you come as a hippie or a Beach Boy? I was, we were going to try to get the staff to all wear tie-dyed T-shirts, but that became, that became unwieldy, and there were some of them said, I don't do tie-dye. Um, but I may wear a tie-dye T-shirt anyway. Under, under my robe or on top of the clergy collar or something like that. I thought about encouraging people to wear an Hawaiian shirt if they got one or something bright and colorful. What, what could we do? Is there some way that we could, you know, inject some, some color into this that, that would be indicative of good vibrations? You guys got any suggestions? Seriously, I'm asking for suggestions. That's the best you've got? Really? <laughs> Well, if you come up with something, feel free to do it. I actually thought about getting everybody one of those plastic lays, but I, I, don't, know, I don't know where I could get, you know, several hundred of those. Um, but uh, you go ahead and think of something that might be indicative of, you know, the good vibrations of being able to be in worship in church here. And if it's a really good idea, send it to me. And we'll try to send it out to everybody else. I'm probably, just, just so you know, I'm probably going to wear this, you know, the, as, as the Brits refer to it, the dog collar shirt. And I'm probably going to put a tie-dyed t-shirt over the top of it. Just so that I'm thinking I'm Brian Wilson or somebody. So anyway, that's that. Now, turn to somebody who's close to you. Somebody who's close. you got one right in front of you there, Carol. And I want you to say to that person, boy, I'm glad you're here. And let me tell you, I'm glad you're here too. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy tried and true with thanksgiving I'll be a living sanctuary 
for you. Now let's just bring it down. Bow your heads. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary. Pray with me. Make us aware, Lord, that you are with us. During this hour, challenge us, inspire us, comfort us. Bring us further forward into the people that you would call us to be. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. As children of God, let us sing. Please join me in affirming our beliefs in the Nicene Creed found on page 880 of your hymnal and on the screen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, 
who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of the sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. may be seated now you know how when you when you're going down the road and you know where you're supposed to be going and you're actually supposed to be going someplace else but because you're used to going that particular way you take the turn off that you're used to taking instead of going to where you're supposed to go okay I forgot Jeff Jeff this is our consecration time it is our stewardship drive and Jeff is here to speak to us Is anybody getting, anybody getting nervous right now that uh, Wally's uh, messages, greetings, announcements for the week took 15 minutes? Uh, we're out of sequence now, and now we have a special speaker. Really short sermon. He said something about being excited for the hour, so we'll see if we can hold him to that. Um, about three weeks ago, Eli Sidwell called me and... Uh, he doesn't call me that often, and got me pretty excited when he said, Consecration Sunday series of speakers. And when you're not really expecting to talk to somebody and they say that, it sounds like it's a tongue twister. And <clears throat> Consecration Sunday series of speakers. Okay, what is that? Um, so at first I was thinking, man, I got to figure out whatever date he gives me, I got something going on. And uh, he gave me three dates, and I didn't really commit to any of them, but uh, he called me again, and uh, he reminded me that I, I had done this about four or five years ago, and then he said, you did a good job, and I said, oh, okay, so I guess I, guess I better do it again, and so I got to, to thinking about it, and I said, well, if I did a pretty good job last time, maybe I'll just find my notes, and I'll just say the same thing, but uh, I wasn't able to find my notes. Um, so then I saw Pastor Wally on Tuesday, and I said, you know what, uh, I don't really know what I want to talk about. Uh, I'm not really sure, you know, it, obviously I'm a member of this church, and I, I feel proud to, to be able to give, but I, I don't know what I should really speak about. And he really wasn't any help. Uh, I was hoping... <laughs> I was really hoping that he would give me a clever poem or that perfect scripture that I could just stand up here and read, and it'd be really easy. Well, that probably wouldn't have been as rewarding. Uh, and actually, he was, he was a big help. He said, um, talk about two things. And I told him before I asked the question, I said, don't get mad if I don't do what you asked me to do, because I might just do what I want to do instead. So uh, he said, number one, what does the church mean to you? And the second thing he said is, why do you give? And those are pretty simple. What does the church mean to you? Why do you give? So after thinking about those two questions for the last five days, I've come up with 382 reasons. <laughs> I'll share my top three. Number one, people. Uh, five years ago, that is what I spoke about. I spoke about uh, people that had been influential in my early years in Charleston, my early years uh, in this community, my early years as a Christian, and it was pretty amazing that those five people that were very influential in my life when I joined Wesley were all members of Wesley Church. Three of them are here today. Pretty cool. Uh, now when I think of people, it's the fact that many of the people that I choose to call my friends are also Wesley people. They're people I see at church every Sunday. Even better, many of the children in this church 
are people that my children choose to call their friends. They're all Wesley people. Number two, place. When people ask you where you go to church, it's pretty easy to say, yeah, I, I go to that, that place that's just south of Eastern on 4th Street. Everybody knows where Wesley is. Um, for me, it's where I go on a Sunday morning when things are great. It's also where I go when things are not great. It's where I go on a Monday at lunch. I thought I might do this to myself. Uh, it's where I go mo Monday at lunch and I sit in the chapel and I wonder if I can make it through Monday. But for me, this place is consistency. In a world that's far from consistent, this place is consistent. It's amazing for me to listen to Wally's sermon on Sunday and feel like he's talking to me. Whether I need to be raised up or brought back down, he's talking to me. There's 300 of us in here, but he's talking to me. That's how I feel. Other than this place on Sundays, it's a place that's busy all week long. All week long. It's where people go for Boy Scouts. It's where they go to choir practice. It's where they take their children to daycare. It's where they play basketball on Saturday mornings. It's youth group. It's the quilters group. It's the girls on the run. It's caregivers. It's the Wesley Band, Stephen Ministry. So while Sundays are a great place, this place is pretty special every day and sometimes every evening throughout the week. This is a great place. My last reason is choice. I give, we give, because it's our choice. There's so many things in life that you have to do. You have to pay for, you have to give to, you have to do this. I don't like being told what I have to do. I choose to give to this place because it's very special for me. I give because I believe in these people and this place. Thank you. That was really good. By the way, Caroline tells me that I missed, her, I missed my one opportunity to hear her speak in public last week. So she said she's never doing it again, but I understand she did a good job too. Now it's time for our children, if they want to come and sit with me for a moment. Good morning. Why are you wearing that red t-shirt, Jeb? To support the Cardinals. What a good thing to do. I have no idea what that feels like. See my hands? They're empty, right? Okay. Still empty? Now I'm holding something. What am I holding? I'm not a magician, by the way. What am I holding? I'm holding air. There's air in there. Yes, it's just air. What else? I'm holding nothing, but at the same time, I'm holding everything right here. If I were to give you an offer to say, I'm going to get you something, what would you want? You want a dog, a horse, a car? You want a computer? You have, you have what, a horse? A computer, okay, what? You want the Cardinals to win the World Series? Greedy, they did that last year. 12 and 12, you know. What would you like? There was a king that was named Solomon and God came to him and God said, I'm going to give you everything, anything that you want. 
anything and everything that you want. And Solomon thought for a while, scratched his head a little bit and said, I think I want you to make me wise because I want to be a good king. I don't want just lots of stuff. I don't want lots of gold and jewels and all that sort of thing. Although he might have liked a computer because this was a long time ago. He said, I want you to make me wise. God said, that's a good thing to ask for. And because, because you want to be wise, I'm going to give you all that other stuff too. I'm going to make you a great king because you're wise, but you're also going to be really rich and you're going to be really, <coughs> really powerful and all those things because you have asked for the right thing. Sometimes we get so caught up, don't we, in asking for things that we forget about right here, we have everything. Everything that we ever need is right in our hands because God has offered us everything. Sometimes it's health. Sometimes it's being able to run. Sometimes it's being able to do well in school. Sometimes it's the Cardinals winning the World Series. Sometimes it's having a happy family or having a dog that licks your face. Sometimes it's any of those kinds of things, but it's all right here because God offers us those things. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for everything that you give to us. Thank you, God, and help us always be grateful. Amen. There's Cindy, and off you go. Thank you, Anna. What a nice gift. Today's scripture reading can be found in the book of 1 Kings, uh, although in two different places. Please follow along in your pew Bible. Uh, 1 Kings 3 can be found on page 306 of the Old Testament. First from chapter 3, verses 4 through 9. The king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for that was the principal high place. Solomon used to offer a thousand burnt offerings on that altar. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I should give you. And Solomon said, You have shown great and steadfast love to your servant, my father David, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart toward you. And you have kept him kept for him this great and steadfast love, and have given him a son to sit on his throne today. And now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David, although I am only a child. I do not know how to go out or come in, and your servant is in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a great people, so numerous they cannot be numbered or counted. 
Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, able to discern between good and evil. For who can govern this, your great people? And then again in chapter 11, verses 1 through 8. King Solomon loved many foreign women along with the daughter of Pharaoh, Moabite, Ammonite, Edomite, Sidonian, and Hittite women from the nations concerning which the Lord had said to the Israelites, you shall not enter into marriage with them, neither shall they with you. For they will surely incline your heart to follow their gods. Solomon clung to these in love. Among his wives were 700 princesses and 300 concubines, and his wives turned away his heart. For when Solomon was old, his wives turned away his heart after other gods, and his heart was not true to the Lord his God, as was the heart of his father David. For Solomon followed Astarte, the goddess of the Sidonians, and Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. So Solomon did what was evil in the sight of the Lord and did not completely follow the Lord as his father David had done. Then Solomon built a high place for Chemosh in the abomination of Moab and for Molech, the abomination of the Ammonites on the mountain east of Jerusalem. He did the same for all his foreign wives who offered incense and sacrificed to their gods. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. As the ushers prepare themselves to receive our offering, I would remind you to be thankful. Just simply be thankful for everything that you've received. I think we should be thankful for Anna and the song that she sang. I think that we should be thankful we had children up here. I think I should be thankful that I had Sharon up here reading words that she didn't want to have to say. The people, the consistency, the choice that Jeff talked about, the colors of the trees outside, the the cool temperatures but not the cold temperatures yet. There are so many things for which we have to be thankful. Let us give thanks and let us receive an offering.
Lord, receive our gifts. Receive them as we have received gifts from you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. As we enter into a time of prayer, I would like to share these concerns with you. Uh, first of all, this is, well, I guess it's kind of a prayer concern. A uh, reminder that the uh, blood pressure screening is occurring today, in case you didn't remember that, which I did not, but uh, um, it is today. Rosalie and Terry are asking prayers for Tim, who is receiving chemo and radiation treatments at the VA Medical Center in Indianapolis for throat cancer. Prayers for him. Stan is asking us to pray for all of our members physically unable to attend services, especially Rita McNutt, as she celebrated her 97th birthday yesterday. God love her. Do you know Rita? One of the sweetest women on the face of the planet. Carolyn, sitting next to Stan, is offering a thank you to the 19 volunteers that helped with the Habitat build yesterday. We did siding, wiring, drywall, and had a wonderful lunch. Not made, but blessed by me, yes. <laughs> um, Al and Julie are asking for prayers for safe travel for their son-in-law, who is driving home Tuesday from Texas, from the Texas State Fair after working there the past four weeks. And Tom and Ruth Ann are asking for prayers for healing and comfort for their friend Donita Wallace, who had a bad fall yesterday. I'd like us to pray for all of those. I'd like to pray for all of those concerns and all of those uh, joys that, that we might mention. And I would also, a special emphasis on the request that Stan made. The request for those people who are unable to be here with us. I mean, we're, we're on the internet, but not everybody has internet. We are streaming, but not everybody chooses to do that. And it's not the same thing as actually being here in this place. I mean, it's as good as we can get for some folks, but there are people who wish they could be here, people who were here for generations, and now they can't be. Pray for them. Remember them. Maybe they're not even a part of this church here, but maybe they're a part of some other church someplace else. Pray for those folks who want to be in church but can't. As I do, I'm going to pray here. And as I do, I'm going to invite you to pray here with us. It's a good thing, Lord, to just simply enter into a time of quiet and a time of still and listen to you speak to us. We have our concerns and we have our words, but sometimes it's important just to hear yours. You've heard, you know our needs before we even know them. 
speak to us again your words, your words of life and of hope, your words of obedience, your words of empowerment. Help us remember there is nothing we cannot do with you. Help us remember that there is no task too great as long as you stand with us. We especially pray this day, Lord, for those who aren't here. For those who would, who would choose to be here if they could, but who cannot. Help them know that just as you were with them, we are with them as well. All these things we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
I remember in Easter singing that hymn with my grandparents. My mother played the piano. My grandmother sang the, sang the uh, melody. My grand, I sang a bass line. And my grandfather, I remember, Gary, were you singing the, that tenor line there? You had to be. That's, isn't that a beautiful tenor line? Yeah, it's, it's up there, but yeah. The story of Solomon is kind of an easy story to talk about. It's, it's, it's one that we have heard time and time and time again. It's a story that is as old as stories themselves. Solomon was a good guy. Son of a famous king, son of the great king, the great warrior King David. Yeah, let's not talk about how Solomon came about because that's a whole other story in itself. But you just read the Bible if you want to figure that one out. But anyway, here's Solomon. And God comes to Solomon on the strength of his relationship with Solomon's father and says... What do you want? Ask for something, I'm going to give it to you. And Solomon, who I think was led by grace to ask this, said, Make me wise. Make me smart. I need help in leading your great people. Because, well, leading anybody can be sort of a cantankerous position. Lead me. Guide me. Teach me. Help me. Because I need help. God said, hey, that's a good thing. You've asked smart. You've asked wisely. Therefore, I'll give you everything else too. <coughs> so for years, it says in the Bible 40 years, but we know that that biblical thing is not 40. It's just a long time. For 40 years, Solomon ruled Israel. The, and for 40 years, he was wise, except near the end. Because a little bit later in the story of Solomon, we found, find out that, well, you know the story about Solomon and all his wives and concubines and holy cow, lots and lots. I mean, we're talking hundreds, right? But not all of them were faithful women, not necessarily unfaithful to him, but unfaithful to God. And bit by bit by bit, Solomon wandered away from the God who had given him everything. So that eventually, into their practice of worship, they introduced two, well, I was going to talk about this, but somehow it seems to be indelicate, inappropriate behavior. Let me just say, inappropriate behavior in the temple, inappropriate behavior with their children, inappropriate behavior with young women, with young men inappropriate behavior with the way that they offered sacrifices and inappropriate behavior in the way that they raised incense to the variety of gods that were there. Not one of the nation's finest hours led by not one of the finest hours of one of their best kings. We do the same thing. We do the same thing. God comes to us and says, I'm going to give you this. I'm going to give you everything you ever wanted. And we're going to say, thank you. I'm, thank you. Thank you very much. God's going to say, I'm going to give you health, and I'm going to give you long life, and I'm going to give you riches, and I'm going to give you all these things, and I'm going to make you wise and smart. It's the same sort of a covenant that God established with Abraham, right? The same sort of a thing. You follow me, and you got all this. And we say, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I get to have all this stuff, and all I have to do is be faithful to God. And then what do we do? Yeah. It's Sunday morning. I don't want to have to get up and go to church. It's Wednesday night. Do I have to go to choir? I have another committee meeting. I don't want to go to Sunday school. Oh, wait a minute. Am I sounding like me? Yeah, one of those things. You've heard that story about the guy who got up in the morning and said to his mother, I don't want to go to church today. And the mom said, you have to go. He said, I don't want to go. Those people don't like me. It's boring there. I, I, I don't want to go. And she said, you have to go. You're the pastor. <laughs> we wander away. We wander away. 
The principles that God has called us to are simple. We know what they are. Jesus referred to them, the great commandment, and the second is like unto it. He didn't come up with those. Those come out of Deuteronomy. You shall love the Lord your God with everything you have, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. It's not hard, right? At least not to remember those things. It's kind of hard to put it into application. But that's what we're called to do. That's what I'm called to love you. That doesn't mean I necessarily have to like you. That just means I have to love you, right? I mean, I have to care about you, care what happens to you. I have to care about what happens. We all have to care about what happens to everybody else, except we wander away from that and we get to the place where I'm going to worry about me. And then I'm not going to worry about God. I'm just going to worry about me. The end of the story of Solomon is that the kingdom is going to be divided. It's not going to happen during Solomon's lifetime because God said, I'm not going to do it to you because of respect for your father, David. But I'm going to do it to your son. And the kingdom got divided into Israel and Judah, northern and southern kingdom. And as we know, in the Middle East, you know, warfare is a kind of way of a life. And it just happens that way. Because Solomon wandered away, his sin was visited upon his son. To fix that is a pretty easy thing. To fix us is a pretty easy thing. It's a matter of refocusing and reprioritizing. What is the important stuff? For Solomon, at first it was being wise and being a good king, and then it was his women and his riches and doing the things that would what? Make other people happy? For us, it's who knows? You know, you buy a new car that you've been looking for for a long time, and you're happy for a while, and then it just gets kind of get to be old hat. You get a new TV or a new suit of clothes, or you try a new restaurant, and it's all wonderful for a while, and then it's just sort of whatever. The gloss goes off, the shine goes off. Let me tell you something that lasts forever. Your relationship with God will never lose its shine unless you let it. Your relationship with God's people will never lose its intensity and its affection unless you let it. God has given you everything. Now, It's up to us to figure out what we do with it. Amen.
Has God given you everything? I, I need a little more energy on that. Has God given you everything? Go in peace. Amen.